Gold is struggling to break past 1,200, but can we see tailwinds for more political risks? Joining me today is Nick Jambruno, Chief Analyst at the KC Report. Nick, uh, good to have you on the show. Great to be here, Daniela. So, Nick, I know we've spoken in the past and you've said that investors should buy gold to hedge political risk. Do you think that now is the best time to be getting into the yellow metal here? Well, you know, I can tell you uh, personally that I just made the largest purchase of gold of my life earlier uh, this week. And uh, yes, I do think it's a, a great time to get into gold, not only uh, because of the valuation, but because of the developments that are going on around the world. I mean, uh, gold is known as uh, the crisis currency for a good reason. It's preserved and even grown wealth in times of crisis and all throughout his human history. And it looks like we are on the verge of, of some very serious uh, turmoil uh, in the international scene and in the financial markets too. So I think now is a great time to get into gold. So you made the largest purchase of your life of, of gold without divulging too much. And I don't want to get too personal here, but what percentage of your portfolio does gold make up of that? Gold, uh, uh, we're talking. You know, gold makes up about ten to twenty percent of my personal portfolio in that in that range. Now it's kind of skewing towards uh, the the latter end of that. Uh, but I think the the current price level uh, is just so compelling um, at, at this moment, and that's uh, you know one of the main reasons why I decided to to do that earlier this week. Uh, turning to U.S. equities now, you know, obviously at an all time high here. What are the biggest risk to an investor's portfolio right now, do you see, Nick? Well, I think, yeah, U.S. equities are, are you know, and, and equities at, at, at large are, are vastly overvalued by really any sort of historical standard or any sort of uh, sane valuation metrics. And that's a that's been a function of all of the money that the central banks around the world have pumped into the system. And a lot of that money has found its way into equity markets. So right now, equity markets just do not look at all, you know, broadly speaking, obviously, do not look at all attractive to me. So if we look at alternative assets now, you know, we, we talk precious metals. I know you, you've talked cryptos in the past, but what about, you know, cannabis? Um, what are your thoughts on the cannabis market? And you, has the ship sailed there or is there room for growth and for people to make money there? Well, I think I think there is still a lot of room for people to make money in this space. I know it's been hot, and it's and like cryptos, there's been a mania in it, and, and you know you see these things in all manias. People want to jump on board, change their name to you know a cannabis company. All these new cannabis companies are sprouting up. I get that. That looks like a mania, but the fact of the matter is, is there is some substance uh, to this mania. This is not a, a tool of mania or anything like that. This is a real industry that is emerging after 80 years of insane prohibition. And when you consider the recreational, the medicinal, and the industrial uses of cannabis, uh, this is going to be an enormous industry. It could be as large as the soft drink industry, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and so forth. And this is just an emerging thing. Canada just legalized it. The U.S. is taking unprecedented steps uh, in that direction, too. So, yes, I think there is a lot of room uh, for growth there. Okay. And so if one were to invest in cannabis stocks, uh, you know, wh what do you like? Is it the, the producers, those involved in the medical side of it, like how do you choose? Well, yes, uh, that's that's tricky because there's maybe two two hundred fifty cannabis companies, and the numbers you know changing constantly. And most of them, like most cryptocurrencies, are are junk. Uh, so how how do you sift through all this garbage and find the really good ones? And lately, uh, I've found that uh, the, the real compelling cannabis companies are uh, the ones that are making oil, because to make cannabis oil is actually a pretty difficult uh, process and technical process, capital intensive process. Uh, it's not like being a producer where you can just throw a seed into the ground and the plant grows. There's not really much of a, uh, you know, a competitive moat, so to say. Uh, anybody can jump into that business. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested in the cannabis oil industry and, and in the cannabis companies that really distinguish themselves uh, in, in other ways. All right. Well, Nick, I know you'll be joining me at the Legacy Investment Summit in Bermuda from October 17th to 19th. Uh, not a bad place to, to hold a summit. Um, are you going to be talking cannabis, gold, cryptos? What can we expect? 
Yes, I will be talking about uh, opportunities in the cannabis market and how you can take advantage of that. And I will also be talking about how, uh, you know, people can secure their digital presence from big Brother spying from these big tech companies, from big government. Um, and, and the tools to do so are within, the, within reach of, of the average citizen. So I'm going to tell people how to do that, too. Well, it's really an all-star uh, roster uh, with you being there and uh, Kiko News will be there covering the event. So look forward to it. Thank you so much, Nick. Great. Thank you, Danielle. And thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.